there we are. All right, guys. So in this session, we're going to be talking about how to maximize virtual assistants in your business. Now, a lot of you guys uh, consider a virtual assistant as a either short term commitment or a long term commitment. This is my thing. I love long term commitment employees. For me, guys, uh, you have to be able to set the standard of what it is. And some of y'all that are listening to this right now have probably never hired an employee in your life, but you're kind of wanting to gravitate toward that, right? And so uh, again, guys, I'm the lead. I'm one of the leaders of Virtual Squad. Virtual Squad is a platform that uh, I created uh, probably last year. No, it was last year in September, where I basically started vetting and hiring virtual assistants. So I'm going to kind of give you guys the 401 on this, the 411 on this, and and share more or less what some of our virtual assistants do, real quick. Uh, so you guys can get an idea of what's available for you. I always feel like everybody's kind of like doing X, Y, Z, and, and I just want to change the game on this. So I got some cats that are in here that are currently in my accountability group. I host accountability group. It's called Surface. You can check it out at surfacemastermind.com. Jill, if you can do me a favor and drop the link for that in the chat box here. But let me give you an example of what we do in our organization and the sources that are available for you. Okay. So this is virtual squad. We offer transaction managers, cold callers, uh, lead managers, which basically manage all of your data, dispositions, acquisitions, video editors, animators, websites, software developers, graphic design, private investigators, uh, social media managers, et cetera. So we offer all kinds of things, but we recruit, mentor field, and manage virtual assistants for various fields, markets, and industries with the emphasis on our primary specialization, which is real estate. Now, why choose us? Commitment and family. We're committed to only bringing the best talent to our clients and exceeding their expectations. So if you scroll down, you'll see some testimonials from some of the individuals that we have been able to service What's so up, far. And then you'll see me looking sexy. And this is virtual my business squad partner is here, Karen. Investors to get I'll go ahead and I'll scroll up. Now, let me give you guys an idea of some of the services that we provide. So this is virtualsquadhub.com. Jill, if you can do me a favor and go ahead and drop this in the comment section. What we offer, right? What do they do? What do some of these VAs that we have do? We have what's called a cold caller admin. They pull the list, they stack the list, they skip trace it, they upload your list into your dialer. Um, they're setting up phone lists and campaigns. They're cold calling and pre qualifying leads. They do SMS campaigns as well as coordinating with acquisition and they send you an end of the day report. Uh, more or less what they were able to find during that time frame and submitting data analysis report. So you can see the quality of your skip tracing. I feel like I don't know a single virtual assistant. How many of you guys have a VA that's doing that? That's actually checking what the, the quality of the data is that they're hitting. So we teach our VAs how to look at those things. I own a data company as well. It's called datafleet.com, thedatafleet.com. You guys are more than welcome to take a look at it. And I've been in the data space now for four years. So, I mean, I've accumulated millions and millions and millions and millions of data. We resell data all, all day. We do skip tracing, et cetera. So our guys, they're, they're pretty much trained to be able to gauge the quality of the data that they're calling. This helps you identify whether or not the source that you're pulling that data from is an accurate source or whether you should be pulling it from another position or another platform that'll help you scale even further. So some of our guys also know how to do the SMS thing. Now, every now and then you get your three in one VA where they're able to do all three and they can be trained to do all three, but you got to be understanding to this because I feel like a lot of people don't fully get it, but virtual assistants are fucking human, which means that they can handle tasks to the caliber of which you can handle tasks as well. So you got to be realistic with your virtual assistant straight from the beginning. So our SMS campaign manager, they manage large scale SMS marketing. Currently in my business, I'm doing 10,000 text messages a day. So they develop uh, the blah, uh, blah. They establish targeting strategies based on customer lifestyle, life cycle segmentation, and they're continuously measuring and optimizing campaign performance while also establishing benchmarks and recommending future tests. So they'll be checking out all of the text messages and all of those things are pretty much gonna be uh, involved. They'll be analyzing and tracking the data to maximize the performance of your SMS can campaigns. So guys, I mean, we do all kinds of stuff with our virtual assistants. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my drive with you guys real quick. Uh, I'm going to show you all some of the things that our guys do. 
So let me go ahead and just type SMS in here. This is my backend database. I know it looks like a lot, but again, I, I really don't care to show y'all. I'm all about abundance. This is what we have the majority of our guys input into your backend SMS system. So we develop macros, right? Macros are a automatic reply spot response where you're able to gauge the quality of a conversation rather than typing out the entire message. You can literally just click on one of these messages here and it will go ahead and it will um, automatically send this reply. Now this is just templates. We have your first outbound message, which we change and filter every 50, every 500 messages. And then we have the follow-up conversation. Here we have your response from seller. How did I get the right person? Who are you? How did you get my number? What is your offer? Give me an offer. Um, what's your asking price? Absurd price, absurd price, retail referral, wants retail, no repairs needed. So, you know, over the, the thousands and thousands of text messages that my company has been able to send out, we're able to track the amount of text messages that more, not the amount of text messages, I'll say text message responses that we're getting on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of our VAs are trained to understand these concepts and adjust accordingly due to your market and or what your market is willing to provide back to your marketing capabilities. So that's what I love about campaign managers that manage SMS. So then the next thing is we have a list I'm uh, sorry, systems manager. What a systems manager technically does is they pull list, they stack them, they skip trace them, they upload phone lists to a dialer. They're literally coordinating with acquisitions. They're tracking your data. They're um, basically monitoring your current employees that you have. If you have other employees, that's what they do. And they also keep track of the account. This is going to sound fucking foobar for some of you guys, but my VAs literally go into my bank account and they track my books for me. So I have like a personal accountant and that's what a systems manager is able to do for you. Then you have what's called a lead manager. Lead manager is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. You know, they manage the leads that are already inside of the marketing system. This is after you vet, right? So I like switching things up. For me, this is imperative. Uh, who here has heard this? I'd like to hear a fuck yeah in the comments. The deal is in the follow-up, right? Who here has heard of this? Drop a fuck yeah in the comments. Main, main reason why this role is important is because they have to be able to understand that there is a follow-up system of which you're going to retouch data that has already been marketed to in your current platform. So a lead manager's sole responsibility is to manage the data that's already in the system, strategize on how you should reach out back to those systems to gauge the cold response that you got from the initial point of contact with that motivated seller or quote unquote motivated potential motivated seller lead. And as well as keeping up with the tracking and analyzation of the actual reason that they want to sell their house. This is going to help you identify what your seller demographic is. Let me give you an example. Up until a couple years ago, the only leads that I would ever go after were, um, were, was high equity, high equity. That was always like the list that I would download and I would cold call and I'd blast through it and I'd always pull shit out of it, right? And then next thing you know, I started really tracking why these people were so motivated. And I came up with two things. The last 20 or 30 deals that I closed, and that was the year of 2019, that had two things in common. They were behind on taxes. They had a second mortgage and they were either going through some sort of probate or there was a death in the family. So that is my niche, guys. That's my niche. And I didn't even know what the hell that was until it was identified for me. Then you have an acquisition manager. So we have VAs that are literally running comps, making offers and negotiating contracts and executing contracts on behalf of your company. Of course, they always act, ask for approval before they do anything, um, which is really amazing. We have a full blown system in place where they're literally negotiating deals for you, actually acquiring deals and contracts for you. So that's something that's there. The next thing is a transaction manager. I don't know how many of you guys are, are, are up to your neck in deals that you have. Um, that's a good problem to have. But essentially what a transaction manager is going to be doing is they're going to be uh, tracking the files that you have and assisting hand in hand with your title company or closing attorney with the communications between the seller and your investor to ensure that the property gets closed and then they have proper documentation. 
So I, one of the things that I love about our transaction managers, guys, and let me tell y'all, again, this is not me upselling y'all to get our fucking VAs. Y'all can if you want. I really give a shit less. I want to be able to provide a product that is unmatched. So for me, this is part of that. So that's where this is coming from. You know, I'm going to tell you guys how to maximize virtual assistants regardless, but for the sake of this video, I got to be able to show you guys some of the things that we're doing at Virtual Squad, which separates us from everybody else because everybody's selling cheap fucking cold calling VAs and that shit just pisses me off because they're, they're replaceable. They're not solidified, dedicated employees that are focused on the growth of your company. And we're going to be going over concepts like this during the duration of this video. I'm going to be talking really fast. So... For all of you that are watching this right now, I have one thing to ask of you. If you can do this, go ahead and drop a fuck yeah in the comments, okay? I need you to take notes on this thing like you're never gonna get the recording and you're gonna present it back to me, okay? I want you to take notes on this thing like you're gonna present it to me and it's not going to be recorded, okay? That way you and I can be on the same page all day. So with that being said, for everybody that is joining this webinar, y'all know I hold absolutely nothing back and I'm going to be delivering massive value for you guys, specifically if y'all are talking about hiring your first employee. It's one thing to hire your employee. It's another thing to be able to groom them to be in a part of your journey. You see, in business, guys, specifically when it comes to hiring employees, the main reason why an employee is going to want to work for you is because you create this thing that's called vision. This vision can be this square that I'm currently sitting in. By the way, I've been losing a lot of weight. I hope y'all noticed. I know y'all haven't said anything, but you know, I'm open to free compliments. <laughs> it just feels good to be able to fucking, you know, wear things like this and not feel fat as fuck. So I've been on a fitness journey. You guys can follow my YouTube channel. I'm currently doing the 75 hard program. But uh, for all my people that are watching this, one of the main things that an employee is going to look for in your company 1000% is always going to be vision because vision is addicting. So let me give you guys some context to exactly what that means. So in 1983, 84, Microsoft hired their 25th employee. It was a man named Steve Ballmer. Now who here knows who Steve Ballmer is? Drop an ID, IDK if, uh, if you have no idea who that is because we're gonna go over this, okay? So Steve Ballmer, worked for Microsoft from the year 1983 all the way until the year 2000, okay? Now, who knows who the owner of Microsoft is? That's Bill Gates, one of the most wealthiest men that ever existed. Now, let me give you guys a, 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 the story because this is powerful to me, okay? So in, in this aspect of, of, of his life, he was a dedicated employee that worked for Microsoft. People don't know this, but even being an employee, you can become a billionaire, okay? So from the year 1983, through shareholdings of the company, through being able to be a loyal employee, through promotions, expansion, through stocks, all of these things were provided to Steve Ballmer as he stayed and was groomed to lead the company. In the year 2000, Bill Gates stepped down as CEO decided to be a member of a board and he sold off the majority shares of Microsoft, retained 53% of the company. So he had full ownership still. Those percentages were hefty, by the way. We're talking about a billion dollar organization. He appointed Steve Ballmer as CEO of Microsoft. And during this time frame, Steve Ballmer being the CEO of Microsoft, he was able to become a billionaire. From the year 2000 to the year 2014, as an employee, his net worth shot up from $1.2 billion to a little over $16 billion. In the year 2014, he retired at the age of 60. And guess what he did with the money that he had? For $7 billion, he bought the Los Angeles Clippers. So he's now the head coach of the LA Clippers. Pretty damn cool, right? <laughs> And so the, the reason why I'm saying this is that companies leave because they outgrow your vision. They outgrow your vision. One of the things that I love about this story is that it speaks volumes. It means that if this employee were interested in sticking around, they would understand that there was a larger outcome. You see where a lot of people fail in the maximization of virtual assistants. You see your virtual assistant is your employee. If you're not thinking of your first employee like a, mar like a marriage, then you're gonna have a very, very bad time. 
Main reason why is because you're only going to expect for them to do the job that you're hiring for them. You're not setting the, the, the standards of how they can grow with your company. What is in it for this individual that you are currently hiring that is a part of your organization? You see what I'm saying? So guys, when you create a vision, your vision is addicting. Anybody is going to want to work for somebody who's in a startup that's killing it, that's killing, that, that's posting $20,000, $40,000, $50,000 checks because they're gravitated toward the opportunity that a piece of that money could be theirs, correct? However, for a lot of people that are messing up in this industry is that they don't create the long-term vision of what it is that they want their business to truly be. And for some of you guys, you just say freedom. And to me, that's a crutch. Some of you guys that are watching this, you say, I want to just be able to not work at all. That's a crutch. That's just something that's going to hold you back. That's not real vision. Okay. Real vision is something that aligns with the entire organization that you're building up. Let me give you guys something. Okay. When someone doesn't have vision, that is when you're able to create vision for them. You're able to borrow your eyes and work within your organization. Because as your vision expands, their vision stays within your vision. But the moment that your vision stops growing and their vision outgrows you, your employee will leave. Your employee will leave because you did not set any standards for promotion, right? And promotion is one of the most important things in business. The reason why employees don't get maximized is because they're not compensated properly. They're not treated properly. Think about any job that you ever had where you knew that you were valuable asset to the company, that they didn't show you love. They didn't take care of you. That's why you're in this webinar. That's why you're learning how to hire your employees because you want to do this correctly, right? So let me give you guys an example of what my vision is. So Infinity Cash Offer was one piece of this vision. That was my first wholesaling company. Okay. Now my wholesaling company, I love it a lot. I'm able to do a lot of different crazy things with it. Um, I have multiple people that are working within the organization. We do everything from land acquisitions to development, to flip projects. We do a lot of creative financing, but our primary focus is always to wholesale our properties. Infinity Cash Offer is my investment company. That's my wholesaling company. I created this company to be able to never have to pay a wholesaler an assignment fee so that I could find the deals that I wanted. The next thing that I'm going to be creating is my construction team so I can monetize the construction and help other flippers also understand what they're putting into the marketplace so I can know what my competitors are doing. By them hiring my construction team, I'll be able to take notes on exactly what flippers are doing on a massive scale, those that are taking on 30 to 50 projects a month and I will be able to take note on that. I'll be able to corner the market by offering that service at a cheaper price. The third thing that I'm going to be providing to the marketplace for those that are interested is going to be a title company. I'm planning on opening up a national title company within the next five years. Well, we're going to be doing a lot of curative title work. I told you guys my niche, right? It was death and it was tax delinquency. I love liens. I love, I love situations like this because I get to be the detective. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to fucking be a detective. I don't know what it was, but you know what I mean? Uh, it, Ace Ventura was one of my favorite movies. So I plan on opening up a title company. The next thing is the development company. The next thing is the brokerage. The next thing after that is going to be a material company. I want to be able to make the material and cut the lumber that big developers use to be able to build their neighborhoods. Now, this right here is massive vision of what it is that I want my company to be. This is my 10-year goal to get there by the time I'm 40 years old. I'm currently 30, and uh, I've been working in this industry now for over eight years, and we've been able to do a lot of things, but now we're laying out the spectrum of what it is, okay, of what exactly it is. How can you be, in comp how can you be compensated? How can you grow with us? What's the opportunity that we provide? Do we provide benefits? Do we provide levels for growth? Are you going to be able to be e evaluated and, and, and understood and recognized in front of the entire company? Those are things that keep employees, that help them and, and that grow them and that maximize them so that they're consistently doing the most with your business. So virtual assistants, right? Love, love, love virtual assistants. Main reason why is because for a lot of you guys that are watching this, it's your first employee. It's the first employee that you're ever going to hire, right? And it's affordable. It's affordable. Some of you guys have gotten them at $2. Some of you guys are getting them at $6. My VAs are priced at six. We handle all the onboarding, tra onboarding training and all of the things that we use to be able to make them as unique as they are. But what do you got to do to be able to maximize what a virtual assistant can do for you? Number one, this is the first fucking thing. Well, technically the second thing, because the first thing is 
I want you guys to do this. For all of you that are watching this right now, create a 10-year company vision. Main reason why is because anybody who joins your organization moving forward should be able to understand what their responsibilities are and what their duties are with your company. If you cannot outline those things, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to keep employees. So I want you guys to understand this very important concept. Your vision is addicting. Your vision is what's going to bring employees to your table so that you can grow with your team as an organization, driving toward the vision together. You see what I'm saying? If you understand what I mean, put a fuck yeah in the comments. So with that being said, the second thing, this is the second reason why individuals fail with virtual assistants, okay? I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna hook you guys up with something real quick. And if y'all can, you can screenshot this all you'd like. Uh, um, I'm gonna be sharing all kinds of stuff with you guys. And we're just gonna be going over this shit together. Where are we? There we are, boom, 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 boom. What's up, Karen? Hello. Karen, you wanna introduce yourself while I'm pulling up some stuff? Yeah, but I can't turn on my video. It's okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I want to, but I'm not, I can't. Some oh, things. that's weird. Here, let me see if I can just give you the privilege to do that. Hold on. <laughs> Bubby, go play this over there. I'm doing a video. Wait, buy me. Play it over there. Buy me to get that. I know, I'm almost done. Play it in the room. <laughs> My son, he's so awesome. <laughs> so uh karen you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone hi everybody my name is karen and um i'm quentin's business partner we run a virtual squad together and i've been in the recruitment business for seven years used to be from the energy market before i moved to real estate and we created virtual squad in the last quarter of 2020 we officially launched it on thanksgiving and now I fucking um, we are pushing yeah in the next month or so we're we're like already down to 100 vas it's insane guys it's insane so karen and i so i handle the majority of the marketing there you go and, there we go there we go <laughs> and karen handles the majority of the training aspects as well as the hiring and vetting for our team which is really great so what I want to talk about, guys, is the next reason how the next way that you can maximize a virtual assistant. So I just went over creating vision for your company so that they can align with you on a long term on a long term standpoint versus short term. And I feel like a lot of individuals don't give their VAs the, the, the chance to be able to grow into their organization. And that's where a lot of people fail, guys. I'm telling you, you want immediately you want immediate results but you didn't put in any of the sweat equity. You didn't train. You didn't get them familiar with the way that you want to do things. And that is the reason that you let them go. It makes no fucking sense. If you get an employee, what do they always tell you, right? There's a couple of months of training. And then once you're embedded into the system, at that point, you're able to maximize what your employee is doing. Because now they know your process, now they know your system. They may have came in with experience from previous processes and systems, but there's still that time frame of which you have to have actual hands-on training to be able to teach them how you like to do things. I don't care how many people are in this webinar right now. Each of you guys has a different business that runs way differently than what my business runs, and it has to be respected. So when you hire a VA, a lot of you guys let them go before they're even able to get off of the ground. I just got done hiring a VA who was with the wrong employer. How crazy does that sound? So um, there was a gal, she was probably the strongest cold caller at Virtual Squad that I've ever met. And her name is Joan. Joan's super awesome. She's currently on my team. It's been, she's been on my team now for 17 days and she's pushed 43 leads to our backend system by herself. And not only that guys, so like, I don't know exactly what happened with her previous employer, but, you know, for whatever reason, he fell off of the wagon. He stopped having meetings with her. He stopped um, showing her different ways that she can be creative, stopped teaching her things about sales, stopped reviewing her calls with her, didn't do any reviewing or didn't do any training, didn't even like really dive into the system with the VA. And so uh, we were looking for a place for her. 
I told Karen, I was like, let's bring her over to my crib real quick. Not my crib, but my, I call my office, my crib. <laughs> let's bring her over to my crib and let's see what she's capable of. So she hopped on the dialer. I tested her. I told her that she has until the end of the day to push five leads to our system. She freaking dominated. She pushed eight leads to our system in one day. So with that being said, I hit a, I, I gave her a quota. I gave her a standard. At that point, I reviewed her calls with her. I critiqued her. And every single day in the morning, we have our meeting where we go over these things with our team. You have to be able to establish meetings with them so that they understand where they're messing up. Because you got to understand this, guys. They're from a third world country, right? They don't understand shit about where you're at in your area. Now, they do to a certain extent, right? But what, like, are you telling them about specific landmarks that are in your area? How can they build rapport with sellers, potential motivated seller leads in your area when you haven't even educated them about the hotspots, the best place to eat, right? So like, for example, Joan, she's cold calling my Houston campaign right now because we're buying houses in Houston. You know, I specifically mentioned Astros because those are, that's a very famous baseball team that's there, Astro Stadium, been there a couple times, you know, ate a hot dog there, it was fucking phenomenal. Uh, BB's Cafe, best crawfish I've ever had in my life. Um, South Houston, downtown Houston, multiple different areas, even the DJ screw shop. You know what I mean? I, I was teaching her about these things so that she could understand the culture. I even showed her some of the music. I showed her chopped and screwed music. And, you know, uh, of course she may have not have enjoyed it. She likes like uh, she, she likes uh, different types of music or what it's called, but it's like international music. What do you call that, Karen? What international music? Like uh, music from another place, like um, indie. Um, indie. Indie. Yes, indie, indie music. She likes indie yeah. music. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, is I got I got a chance to hang out with her. I got a chance to know her. When you bring your virtual assistants on, do you do that? Do you connect with the individuals that are going to be working your system, or Definitely. do you just give them a job and you tell them this is what you need yeah. to do? If you're doing that, you're doing this wrong. You see, anybody who joins my team, they join my family because this is like, and I know this sounds crazy for some of y'all, but this is like gangster shit to me. Like you're banging the infinity cash off for colors. Like we we're black and gold all day, black, gold, white. Like those are our colors, right? So when you show up, I need you to understand that you're a part of a reputable company. If you do not know what you're a part of, then I will put you in contact with everybody that I've ever done business with so that you can understand what you're a part of. So, I mean, we introduce our VAs to our entire team here in America, and they're embedded into our system so much towards where they're, they're not only understood that, that, okay, like this is a real organization because we lay it out for them, that this is an actual career. This is a long-term commitment. This is something that I'm going to be a part of. This is a potential family. And if you're not creating family into your business, I'm telling you right now, you're hiring the wrong people. So there's four principles that I like that I go over when I'm gauging the quality of what an employee is going over, okay? And let me, let me write this down for y'all. If y'all can go ahead and drop this in the comments, right? It's faith, family, fitness, finance. Those are the core values of what it is for my employees that are joining my company. Faith, family, fitness, finance. Can one of y'all put that in the comments for me? Faith, family, fitness, finance. These are our core values. Now, what's a core value? Core value is something that our company leads from the front. And I'm gonna go over what each of these things are because this is how you can gauge the quality of your business. Number one, all of us collectively must have faith in what the organization promises are to our current clients. What are we doing? What are we in the business of doing? Who here can tell me among everybody that's watching, truly, what is the business that we're in? What is the business that we're in? Can anybody tell me? I want to answer this question. Whoever answers this question correctly, I will send you a coupon code that's going to get you nine cents skip tracing on all of your leads that you submit to the data fleet. Wow. Who can answer this question correctly? I like that, Stacy. That's straightforward. Helping others in need. Hey, Solution Colby. expert. Colby's here. Where are we at? Mm -hmm. Solving problems. That is it. That's it right there. Solving problems. Dominic, that's all you, man. Message me as soon as you can, okay? <laughs> I got you, bro. Message me on Facebook if you can, and, and I'll get that code over to you. It'll literally be only active for a week, so you have seven days to use it, okay? So it's a specific code that I'm only going to give to you. Can't share with anybody, bro, okay? <laughs> and you can only use it one time. 
So with that being said, Dominique, congratulations. Let's get a round of applause for Dominique for answering the question. We're in the business of solving people's problems, right? So that right there is part of what we are able to do. That's a core value. That's a principle that we instill to the individuals that we hire. If you cannot give this to your, 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 your virtual assistants, if you cannot give this to your virtual assistants, they will fall off. If I don't go to work and I don't know what the, if I go to work and I don't know what my fucking mission statement is, I'm literally like miles ahead. I don't even know what the hell I'm a part of, right? If I'm not going like any, let me give y'all an example. The moment that I'm done meeting with my team, guess what I do? I say, all right, everybody put your hands together. One, two, three, infinity cash offer. And we scream that shit. And then when I'm done, I say, let's help some fucking families. And everybody's like super hype about that because that is what our core values are. That is what we do. We help families. We solve problems. We don't buy houses. We buy problems. Are you instilling a mission statement into what it is that your employees are doing when they're at your organization? Are you just giving them a list and telling them to cold call? You know how much more motivated an employee is going to be when they're, they're, they're with their principles and morals are aligned with your vision and your company? and what your mm -hmm. company stands for, they become excited to go to work because they know that you're going to be helping families. You see what I mean? Let's help some mm -hmm. fucking families. So that's faith. Faith is your ability to be able to create faith in what the organization is capable of doing as well as the service that it provides. Number two is family. Family is full transparency. Full transparency to me is no matter what happens, we communicate with each other. Karen and I, we literally talk every day. I treat Karen as if she was my second wife. I talk to her more <laughs> than my wife sometimes. And I know that sounds crazy, but for you guys, you have to be able to ha instill those principles in with, your team in with your teammates. So family to me isn't just blood. It's also the people that are believing in our vision because the vision for the company is so large. I'm able to harvest visions within it because people want to be a part of this. They want to grow. Folks go to school. They go to Harvard Business School to get jobs working at Google and Microsoft and Apple, right? They have to go to school to this level to get jobs working at companies like that. Why do they do that? Because they set the fucking standard so goddamn high that is an opportunity to be able to work there and they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in education to get a job because it's their dream job to work there. Is your environment doing the same for the people that you're hiring into your organization? That's a question for you to answer. So with that being said, guys, Family to me is being able to create a family-like environment where we build each other up. We fully understand exactly what's going on. The person to the left of me is mentally stable and strong. The same as the person to the right to me is mentally capable and physically capable to do their duties and to complete the things that they know they're supposed to complete while they're part of my team. You know, there's this badass movie I like, right? It's called 300. And let me give you an example. So when, when 300, right, what happens is there's this guy and he's totally down. He's down to ride. He understands the squad. He's trying to regain his honor and he has this deformed back. So he's only able to do so much. He in Leonidas has a meeting with this guy. Turns out this would be the guy that would betray him. So he tells the guy, he's like, look, try to lift your shield above your shoulder, right? So he grabs the shield and he tries to lift it and he can't do it. He can't do it. And he's like, look, having you on my team would put my other team members in danger because every Spartan is equal in strength to the left and equal in strength to the right, right? Your team that you have at your, at your current business, when you're hiring VAs, you have to be able to understand exactly what they're going through. And I just had a big conversation with one of my VAs uh, earlier today. They're having some personal problems with their family. And so I always tell them, no matter what happens, full transparency, you talk to me about anything that's going on, because how am I supposed to help you if you don't communicate those things to me? So one of the things that I also want to make sure that you guys do is moving forward, that when you hire virtual assistants, that you connect with them on a personal level, you understand where they're from, you learn about their culture, you take the time and effort to be able to understand their family, who they're associated with, how many kids that they have, their personal life. This is going to help you develop the psychology of a quality employee. If you're not doing this, you're not creating family in your business. And family is important. 
You see, when an employee leaves me, we send them off like on a Viking funeral status. Like it's beautiful. We, we do a little party for them. We send them off in a very elegant way towards where they're always going to remember our company. And they'll always speak highly about our company because at our company, we provide opportunity, a career and a place for employees to be able to be elevated. What standard are you setting for the family aspect of your business? The next thing is fitness. Fitness is when before you hire an employee, you have to be able to be very, very positive that this employee can fit this time frame of which they're supposed to be work, working with you into their day-to-day -day schedule. You as well, where a lot of you guys mess up is you don't know how to give your VAs critical tasks. And you and legit, we just had this happen today. You know, Karen and I, we had a, a, a client just to be fully transparent. Y'all know I don't hold shit back. Uh, we had a client just stop giving our VA work. They were like, we, we don't know what else to give you. My VA kept coming back to them, telling them like, hey, you know, we, we want to, you know, I need work. Well, what can I do? I'm here. I showed up, right? And they're like, oh, we don't have work for you today. Go back and, and come back tomorrow and maybe I'll have something for you. That's not how this works, guys. That's not how this works. I'm sorry, but it's just not. You see, when you hire an employee for your business, it's a full-time commitment. No matter what it is, whether they're doing 20 hours or 40 hours, you have to be able to commit equally to that VA because they need to understand your business. Now, I understand for some of you guys, you're fucking newbies and I get it. You're just getting into the game and that's completely fine. You know, I respect where you're at in your business, but these are all foundational things. If you join this webinar is because you were curious about maximizing virtual assistance. Am I correct? You know, type of fuck yeah in the comments if you're listening to me. So if you're not being able to provide a scope of work for your virtual assistants to do on a day-to-day -day basis, how are they supposed to create fitness in your organization? How are they supposed to build with you when you're not allowing them to maximize their, their skill sets and the things that they're passionate about? So that's another thing, fitness. The last one is finance. Can you actually afford to keep an employee? And can the employee be duplicated? If the employee is doing so much for you, it would make more sense to pay the employee more because of their performance, right? And finance to me is your ability to be able to accommodate the employee who is doing the most in your business. So uh, right now, you know, Joan, Joan just showed, uh, let me give you guys an example. So Joan, love Joan to death. I have two other virtual assistants that have been cold calling for me that I also love to death. They're very amazing. One of the things that I love about this guys is that when you're able to bring in a uh, specific talent, it challenges the talent that's already on the board. Because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I love to compete. I do right now. Like I'm competing with individuals that don't even know that I'm competing with them. You know what I'm saying? And, and I truly believe that you have to be able to create competitors in a positive, graceful manner where it's not toxic. Because I know some people create competitors and it's toxic. <laughs> and you have to be able to do this and it be a positive thing that you implement into your day-to-day -day system. Okay. And what do I mean by this? When you are, when you're able to unleash an employee that does the most, it elevates the other employees. Main reason why is because our other two cold callers, they were killing it. However, Joan came in and showed something that we were thinking was totally impossible. And because of that, that's elevated our other employees and we're getting more leads than I can even know what to do with at this point. Maybe I'll pass them and pass them along to some of you guys, but that's my thing. Finance to me is your employee's ability to be able to bring the company the income that they've agreed to bring, as well as being able to be compensated for the work and effort that they're doing. So uh, faith, family, fitness, finance. Those are our core values in our company. I'd love for you guys to use them. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not taking any credit for that. My mentor gave that to me a while ago. Is this really awesome man named Preston Brown out in El Paso. Y'all can follow him on TikTok. I've been coaching him through social media. So y'all are more than welcome to take a look at what he has going on. So I wanna go over something that's powerful. You guys are more than welcome to keep this. This is number two, okay? Well, technically number three now. I keep switching these around. I had a plan but I just keep getting passionate about what I'm talking about. But Karen and I, we're gonna be going over different examples. As soon as I'm done, I'm gonna pass the mic to Karen and then we're gonna kind of develop a little bit about what a leadership role looks like because Karen is seen as a leader in our company. All of our VAs, they go to her for a specific reason is because she spends the most time with them. I'm able to intervene and chime in when I can and I do my powwow, my pep talks and she sees it, she loves it. I, I hope I make it fun for our company. <laughs> yes, you do. 
and, Don't worry. and with, with everything that we have going on, this is just one of those things where it's like, you got to be able to develop an environment that is addicting. Like your employees, AKA your VAs have to be able to come through tomorrow and say, yo, like I cannot wait to clock in and work with Q because working with me is fucking fun and it has to be fun. It has to be innovative and it has to be creating like creative where you're creating things consistently that drive the company to a positive direction. So um, those are core values. Number one, right? We went over this, right? Number one is defining the roles and defining your systems and understanding what your vision is. Number two, number two is creating the principles of which your company is going to be putting forth for any employee that joins moving forward. Number three, this one right here is insane. How do you expect a VA to do anything when you haven't created a scope of work? What is the scope of work? Who can tell me what a scope of work is in the comments? I'm going to grab my gallon of water real quick, y'all. I see um, Eric and Bernard, you're here. Eric and Bernard are here. Um, we're going to invite you to say hi. There are VAs. Um, they work. They work with us. They're a member of our admin team. Eric, maybe you could do a little talk about the KPI, KPI tracking and uh, bernard just you know maybe hub staff okay we're gonna discuss hub staff yes we're gonna get technical here in a bit which is something that i would love for you to help us with karen yes actually we have eric and uh, bernard bernard just joined your team today oh no nice. and... yes he's he's in charge of hub staff of time time tracking and eric is one of our systems managers that's what's up. Eric is one of our systems managers and he's also in our admin team. And um, he can very much discuss KPI tracking. He does this every day. I love KPI tracking. It's my favorite thing. I like being able to look at the skeleton of my business. Okay, guys. <laughs> they're, they're like, huh? All of a sudden they're shy. Yes, just, you know, just maybe one or two minutes. <laughs> what's the scope of work, guys? Oh, there we go. Define tasks to help reach milestones for the family business. I love that. Yes. Now, let me go ahead and go over my scope of work. You guys are more than welcome to screenshot this. Now would be the time for y'all to go ahead and, uh, yeah, pull out another phone and screenshot it or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So this is for our lead acquisition specialist. And what this is, is the qualifying of leads into profitable transactions through tactical negotiations, relationship, rapport building, and proper evaluations of proper property seller needs through cold calling. So what are their roles and responsibilities? To receive, make calls from all marketing platforms and maintain seller to company communication. Use the scripts that we provide to qualify all leads, push all qualified leads to Podio, report to and assign our acquisition manager, that's our Americans that we have in-house, by ensuring leads are properly qualified. So they meet up with the acquisition team once a week to go over the leads that are being pushed and what the feedback and the responses are on those leads. Um, test and evaluate consumer response to different negotiation tactics, scripts, and training. So sometimes we change up the script. We change it up because it's either out of, out of, it's, it's outdated or it's just not effective. They link proper leads to the proper campaigns for accurate tracking and measuring, work with marketing manager to track marketing analysis data, actively seek referrals and introductions to network with possible sellers. So we teach our VAs to turn sellers into bird dogs when they don't wanna sell the property that they live in. Additional duties and or responsibilities will be assigned as deemed necessary. We give them a 48 hour notice before we decide to switch what, there is, what their role is with our company. We hold to the highest ethical standards and use business judgment to balance the needs of the client with the needs of the company. Work hand in hand with acquisition managers to successfully close deals. This is what I expect from every individual that cold calls for our team. Qualify 15 leads a week, set proper expectation for the lead acquisition manager, manager to, continue, to have a continuous flow of communication, contract four deals a month per, per month with acquisition, they need to have at least 150 sales calls daily, meaning they have to have 150 conversations daily, 3,000 total calls minimum per month. So 3,000 conversations. Participate in weekly leadership meetings. So uh, I have this back drive 
It's only available in my Surface Academy right now. I took it off from my Facebook groups. I have about, I think there's about a hundred plus self-help books that are in there. So the RVAs that are on our team, they download Amazon Kindle, which is really awesome. And you're able to upload these books to Amazon Kindle for free. And if you have a tablet or your phone, you can read these books. So we actually have book meetings, book clubs, where we get our team involved and uh, we're all on the same page. And when we're all growing together, we grow faster. So having those leadership meetings is so important, guys. If you can do it twice a week, let's say Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's going to be the most critical time to do it even Mondays and Wednesdays. So you can handle anything that's critical that needs to be done during the week. So their goal is to have a 2.5 qualified lead to opportunity ratio and or 60 leads pushed per month. So that's the amount of calls that they make and that's the percentage that we want them to have. So if they made 3000 total calls, 2.5% of that is 60 leads that are pushed to Podio, I believe that are actually like qualified, ready to sell per month. So they're expected to be on the phones Monday through Friday. Overtime is granted upon request. So I always tell them if you want to get overtime with our with our company, with our organization, I, I, I don't mind that you get overtime as long as you get permission from us first. So that way we know that, okay, we have an employee that's going to be calling a little after seven today. They're expected to be on the phones Monday through Friday. Weekday standard time is between 12 p.m. and 9 p.m. I like them calling because a lot of people don't answer in the morning. So I prefer lunch to evening. Three notices of late arrival or leaving early without approval can result in corrective action to include termination of employment. This helps you set the standard. It's a standard setting document here. What's in it for you? So we, we have our base pay of what we are allowed to pay our VAs. My VAs are different. Uh, that's that. This is an outdated document, so you can disregard. Lead acquisition specialist agrees to a 45-day trial period. So we do a trial period with our team. American holidays are in regards to day off. The employee will be given a written performance appraisal at least once per year where they're pretty much their work with our company is going to be reviewed. When we do this, guys, basically what happens is we give them the opportunity to grow. So I used to do this every year. Now we do this every three months where we evaluate our employees and uh, we do a 25 cent raise at a time and or a large bonus. It depends on the quality of the work that they're putting into the organization. And I reward on work. If I see somebody that's grinding, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, fuck, I'm a commit to that person. I'm gonna say, man, that person right there is hustling. We need to reward this person because, for a fact, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now on the front end of things, while we're contracting these leads and closing them the way that we are, if it wasn't for this individual that was really taking the time to just elevate the system. So what this is is a company quota and standard that you have to be able to set for the employees that are joining your team. So uh, I wanted to show you guys that because a lot of people don't do that. And when you hire your first employee, it's really hard because you've never actually given them instructions on what it is that they have to do to be successful with your organization. And I want you guys to be able to set the standards, set the tone, create a role doc, create a system for them. You can copy mine if you want, I don't care. I just wanted to showcase it on this video for you guys that are watching. Um, but I'm almost positive that if you truly applied this one small tweak where they actually know their roles, duties, and responsibilities, that they would be able to complete much more. Because then at that point, they're not nagging you for work. They're not saying, hey, I showed up for work, but you don't have anything for me, right? It's never going to be like that because you've already outlined what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And remember what I was saying in the, in the document, right? It says this, and it's powerful. It says additional tasks will be assigned as needed right? As deemed necessary. Why do I do that? Why do I do that? Because I want to keep work exciting. I'll change the narrative for a day. I'll switch it up 24 to 48 hours in advance so that they can know that, okay, we're going to try a different approach. Q got something up his sleeve and we're going to make this exciting for the employees as they're joining our team. Some of you guys don't understand how powerful it is to have a quota. If you give me a quota, guess what it's going to make me do? Who can tell me in the comments? If I were to say, Eric, I need you to cold call 1,000 leads this week. You got five days to do it. If you're able to do it, you are going to be compensated incredibly. What would you say? What would you do? What is the quote? Exactly. It's going to make them not just work, but over commit, over achieve. And that's what's going to maximize your virtual assistant. 
So remember guys, no matter what it is, when they join your team, create a role doc of what the roles and responsibilities are. Do you even know what your own roles and responsibilities are? Because that's another question. For a lot of people that are getting into this industry, they don't even know what they do. So I would highly recommend that you start taking what your business is and you start really breaking it into pieces so that you can understand what your role is and then what the role that you expect of your employee is. And then you can start assigning things and delegating things as you grow. So uh, let's get into the technicalities of things. You know, one of the things I think a lot of people always uh, are upset about, they don't know how to, how to track what the work is that their VA is doing. And I think Karen had mentioned something that we use in our system. Karen, do you want to go ahead and take the mic from here? Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, so yes, to track your, your VA's um, productivity, um, you can actually use a couple of um, software out there like Hubstaff or Time Doctor. But what we prefer to use is Hubstaff. And it tracks your, your VA's, um, their clock in, their clock out, and um, their mouse clicks, their keyboard presses. Um, it also records their screens. Okay, it gives you, it gives you like um, access to see what they're doing. Okay, so you're not gonna be, so you will have that confidence that they're actually working for you. You're not, you know, always be wondering what is my VA doing right now. So you can always um, log in and see what they're doing. Um, so not only that, we also. Do you want me to go ahead and show what that looks like? Um, sure, go ahead. I, I don't mind. I don't mind. All right, guys, at this point, we're taking a deep look at my business, which is super awesome. But Karen's absolutely right. So uh, all of the VAs that we have, they get signed up for a platform called Hubstaff. And this allows for me to track the things that my VAs are doing. So currently, guys, we're at 154 hours worked for the entire week. Uh, my system right now has multiple virtual assistants that are using call tools. They're doing social media for me, administrative work. They're tracking our Podio. They're doing our smarter contact SMS. Now, what I love about this is if I go to, again, like these, this is your, your, your thing that you have on the side that kind of tells you about everything you have going on. So you can do your timesheets. You can check reports. Your reports is going to tell you the productivity of your virtual assistants. Uh, you can literally do like time and activity weekly you can do weekly you can see which of my employees are killing it among everybody else and i can also create to-do lists for them to do on a day-to-day -day basis this is like a full-blown workplace now um we use this because this helps us gauge the quality of the virtual assistant now when i go to activity what i love about this is i can literally filter from one individual to the next so let me go ahead and showcase uh jill jill's in this call right now jill helps me manage all of my social media stuff so if you see me looking sexy uh, that's Jill. Jill does that for me. <laughs> I definitely don't look like that all the time. Hi, Jill. We have a few of our VAs here. Yeah, yeah. What I love about Jill is Jill's always doing something. His level of productivity has gone up 4%. His uh, ORG average, which I'm, I think that is their time that they're, that they're working. Currently, he's, he's probably one of our hardest working VAs that I have on our team. So you'll be able to see some of the things that he's working on. So I told him that I'm working on blasting this thing that we're doing. And he's creating a, a font for us, for us to promote our virtual assistant company. So he's doing a lot of things on the back end. He's helping me develop what we're doing in Surface with our mastermind, with our academy, everything that we have going on. Jill is always doing crazy things. He's helping me do my, 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 my screen stuff for 75 hard. This is my thumbnail for my YouTube channel. And he, he's doing so much at the same time, he's educating himself. So I love that about Jill. And now you can see he's actually here in our webinar. <laughs> and it's screenshotting things. So he, you, you can tell that he's just consistently doing things. And that's one of the things that I love about Jill is that doing this, we're able to identify exactly which employees are the strongest, which ones are actually dedicated, which ones are putting in the most work. And, and you can reward based on performance. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, this is one of the things that I always go into before I grant bonuses. I'm always like, you know what? I see Jill killing it. Let's go ahead and give him a little extra on this next payment that we're going to be sending out. Doing that's going to keep your employees motivated to do the most in your business. So yeah, Hubstaff is phenomenal, but uh, Karen knows how to use it a little bit more than I do. I just kind of go in and I log in to see the productivity of what individuals are doing. Mm -hmm. So Karen, another thing that I wanted to go over is uh, I think a lot of the guys were, were, were like, wow, you know, the, the call tools thing. 
and the integration and because uh, our cold callers don't just cold call they do a lot more you kind of want to go over what the what the cold callers do what their responsibilities are yes okay so we train our cold callers not just a cold call but also to do admin work so they're going to be able to help you front end and back end so what does that mean they can your our cold callers are like 70 percent cold calling and 30 percent admin work so they can help you pull lists scrub them um stack them you know if you have rei sift or even if you don't we actually train them how to manually stack lists but it, it's going to take time it's a little bit you know, it's all time consuming. So it's better if you have a subscription to RI Sift. And then they are also trained to skip trace, given that you have um, a skip tracing app. And they're going to be uploading that list um, to the dialer. And then they're going to be cold calling and pre qualifying the leads for you. So at the end of the day, you know, if you have an eight to five job, which is probably one of the reasons why you're hiring a cold caller to do this task for you, um, at the end of the day, you can just um, get home and you know, um, to pre-qualified leads. Um, and uh, they're also going to be sending you end of day report. What does that mean? So they're going to be tracking their own KPI. At the end of the day, you're going to get a report of what they have accomplished for the day, how many numbers they have dialed, how many people they have talked to, how many were wrong numbers, how many were interested, how many were not, how many actually wants to have an offer. So these are the things that your VA can do for you. So that's just for cold caller, okay? And we have different levels to our VAs here at Virtual Squad. We offer cold caller admin, okay? And we have um, SMS campaign manager, um, lead campaign manager, uh, dispositions manager, transaction coordinator, and acquisition manager, and of course, um, systems manager. Now I want to talk about systems managers. Um, it's something that um, not other virtual assistant companies offer. It's something that um, Q and I have um, um, formed together here at Virtual Squad. So these are people who are heavy on data, okay? They're virtual assistants who are heavy on data. They have very, they have analytical minds, okay? And uh, the people that we vet for these positions, uh, we choose those who've had managerial experience, team lead role, or workforce or reports analysis role in the call centers here in the Philippines. Why? Because we need people who are able, you know, who are used to handling responsibilities. Like a systems managers, they're also going to be tasked to supervise your VAs. Okay, so systems managers are we train them on Excel. Okay, we train them how to be beasts um, in Excel or Google Sheets. Um, they're used to, uh, you know, what they do is, you know, they're going to be in charge of all of the tools that you use. Um, they're going to be in charge of your, you know, um, just to make sure that everything is running smoothly. There's a seamless process from your, you know, uh, pulling list to those leads being pushed to the dialer, and for the dialer to have, you know, um, um you know, um, leads you know, for your cold caller to dial. And at the end of the day, you're going to be tracking your cold caller's KPI, okay? Because you can't scale your business if you can't measure it if you don't know where you are in your business you won't be able to scale it so your systems manager is going to be your go-to guy for numbers and data all right and they also do a little bit of you know quality check on your code callers calls from time to time they're going to be listening to the recordings and coach your code caller so you don't have to do that you know because here at virtual squad we love doing the heavy lifting for you okay so a lot of a lot of clients ask me, okay, so what I need, what do I need to set up in order to get started? What do we need to prepare for you? To be honest, nothing much. You just need to subscribe to those tools that we recommend. Give us the logins, and we'll we're gonna set up everything for you from the ground up. You know, meaning back end, front end. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to set it up yourself and uh, you know, um, tweak it or anything. The systems manager and or systems admin at Virtual Squad are going to be doing all of that for you. Okay, we want to make sure that there's a seamless process and a smooth transition. And what else? So systems managers from time to time, we also have. If you guys you know, like, because... I can show you an example of what a systems manager is capable of doing. If y'all want to take a look at my business, this is hardcore shit, by the way. You're uh, also heavy on REI SIF, guys. Yeah. Keep in yeah. mind. This is like, uh, this is hardcore. So I'll go over this real quick. Now, the only way that you're going to be able to see reports like this is if they're manually inputted and pulled. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this with you guys. These are some of my company stats for the beginning of March. 
So this will tell me the total number of leads that are being pushed to our system. So this is Podio details. 20 leads have been pushed so far for March and we're 10 days in. That's pretty damn good. That's about two leads a day. That's just for Podio. Over here, this goes over the number of offers that we made, the number of contracts that we sent out and the three properties that we currently have under contract. This gets updated weekly. We're not running RVM. So currently there's no RVM stats to show. These are my call tools breakdown. So I can see which of my agents are currently performing over the others. So this is on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the, the everything summarized for that week. This is the first week of March. So the seven total, uh, let's see, Joey, Chris, Katrina, Alexia is killing it. She has 11 hours of talk time. Katrina has five hours of talk time. Joan, nine hours of talk time. I can tell each of these individuals are absolutely killing it. Then our smarter contact breakdown. These are the amount of text messages that got sent out for the first week of March. It's 5,000 per agent. And so far my buddy Joey, who's a 16 year old kid who just closed his first deal at my office, just uh, got done um, pushing a lead to Podio. So that's pretty badass. So this is our acquisition, what you can kind of look for. This is the quality of the disposition in our dialer. So inside of the dialer, I'm always tracking exactly what's going on. How many people said they want an offer? How many people said they got the wrong number? How many went to voicemail? How many were retail? How many said we're not interested? How many maybes? How many people hung up or just didn't answer? How many people spoke a different language? DNC, dead leads, callbacks. You see what I'm, I'm tracking here? This is also my SMS percentages. So we can see the quality of the delivery rate that our SMS is getting per message that we're sending out, depending on what that message is. So over here, you'll kind of see it on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, this one right here is 59%. Whatever message that we sent out this day, we're not going to do that again. 21% uh, response rate, 16% people blocked that phone number that we use. And then we track it again on like a week by week basis. So it, it's super awesome just being able to see some of these things. And that's kind of what a systems manager does for you. That's my back end, guys. I really don't share that shit. So I hope y'all got value from just seeing that because that's what our systems managers are capable of doing. Um, Eric, would you like to introduce Eric? I really would like him to give a little speech. Just um, explain all in a day's work. Um, he's here. Eric, let's go ahead and get you up here. Eric uh, Tagoy? Tagoy, yes, Tagoy. I'm bringing him in. Uh huh. There he is. Hello. Eric, you work with John, right? Jonathan, yeah, jo I do. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Jonathan's one of my uh, students. He works in, uh, he, he, he markets out of Dallas, Fort Worth. That's awesome. What's up, Eric? I just made you a co-host so you can turn on your camera if you'd like. <laughs> well, this was unexpected, actually. Thank you, Karen. I put him on the spot. I'm sorry, Eric. Thank you very much. I don't think I'm camera ready, but let's see. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Good evening. Hey, everybody. This is Eric. Um, he's one of our systems managers. He's currently with a client, but he also works for Virtual Squad part-time as one of our system admin. So he helps us with our processes and he helps us with our training as well. So he's very proficient in Microsoft Excel and he conducts trainings, um, Excel training for our virtual assistants. So guys, we like bringing value, you know, giving virtual assistants ad added value. Once, you know, yes, we train them for like eight or 10 days, right? And after the handoff, that's not it. We make sure that even after being handed off to you, we're gonna be, you know, doing upskill training with them from time to time, you know, aside from the personal, you know, one on one coaching that we do with them, we want to make sure that they're working up to our standards. And we want to make sure that they're not going to get bored with their job because they're going to keep learning new things. And so Eric, would you like to talk about um, the training that we had on Saturday? And of course, you're all in a day's work as a systems manager. All right. Thanks, Kai. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric. And uh, so we actually just had training uh, last week and last Saturday on uh, Excel and how to actually understand because uh, understand the business from end to end, like from because uh, your your system managers can only uh, bring as much value with the amount of information that they have. So 
uh, it's up to you. It's up to us to understand your business. How to act. we don't? We are not going to change your business. What we're going to do is we uh, we under we try to understand your business and then find out where we can put value in it. Basically, um, our our role as a systems manager is to make sure that everything can be uh, written down. All the processes are written down. Everything can be is done at a schedule. Basically, it's. It's uh, what we do is to, um, like like Karen said, uh, to 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 take the uh, have, do 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 the heavy lifting so that you as uh, as an invest as a, as a businessman can do what's important to you, which is to close deals and b build relationships with their clients. And we do the heavy lifting and we do uh, everything that's technical so on the technical side. We make sure that your operation is going uh, running smoothly day to day. And at the end of the day, we, we give you reports so that we can we can talk about it, how the how the business is doing, and then we can take uh, we can make action plans so that we can improve to we can improve tomorrow, we can improve next month, uh, what else we can do. So that's uh, it's it's a yeah. constant improvement of everything that uh, that's happening about the business. What I love about that, just to kind of reiterate on what what Eric is talking about. Um, when you're, you're, you're so what, what, like what I love about the systems thing, let me give you guys an example. Systems manager is one of the highest caliber roles that Virtual Squad offers. And uh, what, what I love about this is a lot of you guys have never seen your business before. You don't even know what it looks like. You just know that you're hustling. You know that you're making money, but you don't know how many calls that you're making to get a deal. You don't know how many text messages that you had to send out to get a deal. You don't know what any of those stats look like, how much money you're spending on marketing. How much of that marketing is actually being converted to actual revenue for your company? What is happening with that revenue? What are you doing with it? Are you investing it in real estate? Are you investing it back into your business? Where can that money that you have that you've made in this industry be best served? Where can you put it where you know it's going to duplicate? And so what I love about our systems managers, what Eric is able to do for uh, my buddy, John, is that he literally takes what the company is and he puts it in front of you so that you can see it for everything that it is. And let me give you an example of this. One of my favorite superhero movies is Iron Man, right? Love Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is a monster. The guy's a freaking beast, right? And when he's figuring out a problem, what does he do? He takes his little image and he projects it out of his chest. And this whole image of whatever the problem is in front of him, it's, it's in front of him so he can see all of the moving pieces, right? And when you're able to see all the moving pieces, he's able to say, you know what? that doesn't belong there. Let's move this over here. Let's expand this real quick and let's push this over here and let's add on to this because this seems, do you see what I'm doing here? They create visualization of what your actual business is and you can't scale what you can't track. For some of you guys, your idea of scaling is spending more on marketing. It's being able to spend more on marketing. And if you're doing that, that's not scaling. That's not scaling. You're supposed to be able to calculate and articulate what is working in your business and then double down on that. Doing this saves you thousands of dollars. So, you know, our, our, our systems managers are built to help you understand how to save thousands of dollars in your money. You know, we haven't done RVM, right? I just showed you guys my company's backend systems. Why? Because I spent a little over $10,000 on RVM last year and we got only one deal closed from it. We spent about twenty to fifty thousand dollars, anywhere between that, on cold calling and and virtual assistants and text message marketing. So, what do you think that I'm going to double down on? If you guys can tell me, drop what it is in the comments, right? So now that I'm able to identify where my money is best spent, I move it to where it serves me. So, for a lot of you guys may not understand that, but you have to be able to visualize exactly what it is that your company is, and that's something that Eric. Uh, prides himself in his ability to be able to do. And he does it very well. I've heard he's one of our best. So that's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's why we put him on our team, you know? Um, so that's okay. one of the things that I wanted to talk about with you guys. You know, the systems managers is such an important role. Uh, do normal VAs practice this? No, this is not normal. No. Uh, we, we, this is something that is specific to what our company does. This isn't a sales pitch either. I wanted to give value. This is just what's available to you, and you're more than like you're more than welcome to message us about it. But um, you know, uh, I've already showed you guys our website, showed you guys some of the roles that are available. You feel free to hit us up at Virtual Squad. We got your back. 
So, um, Karen, you know, one of the things that I think some of these guys are having a problem with is creating the internal trading regiments for their for their employees that helps them maximize what they're doing. You know, so like, obviously, we train on the back end, and then we onboard a lot of other companies may do this part too. they do the training on the back end, and then we onboard, what would you suggest for somebody who's watching this to do to get the most out of their virtual assistant, when they get onboarded onto their team, what should be like the top three things that they should do. Um, when they onboard somebody on their team, a when, virtual when assistant a VA gets, when a VA joins their company, what are the top three things that they should do with that virtual assistant? First of all, okay. You need to get to know the VA. That's the very first thing you have to learn. You, you need to learn their culture. All right. Um, virtual assistants, VAs, they're, they're human. They're not just, you know, VAs from a third world country, so to say <laughs> they're very, they're highly skilled. These are VAs who work with great American brands in the call centers here in the Philippines. What am I talking about? Like Google, okay? These are VAs who work with Google here in the Philippines. Google, um, Amazon, Walmart, right? Um, all the other great brands out there. So these are highly skilled VAs. Um, so they deserve that respect and commitment from you. They, they deserve the same level of commitment that they're gonna give to you because we always um, make sure that they are dedicated when they're working for your when you're when they're working your hours they're not going to be working anything else okay they're not going to be working for other clients make sure of that um because that's only fair okay you're you're paying them for those hours they have to be focused working for you on those hours so get to know your va get to know about their culture get to know them personally because <clears throat> that's going to make them feel um appreciated and they're going to it's going to make them feel um value okay so you're not just um hiring the va just for the work okay so it's going to give them it's going to make them more motivated to work for you they're going to love to just like what q said earlier they're going to love to wake up in the morning and you know look forward to working because um they're inspired by you okay next of course you need to get all of your tools ready okay when you hire a va all of the tools should be there all of their um resources should be ready what are those like the leads okay or if you don't have leads yet if you want the systems managers to pull the list for you your pop stream access or wherever you want to you know get the leads from we also offer that by the way data mining and um what else and um of course just um the commitment okay um i cannot stress this enough because a lot of clients out there yes this is freelance right um, but this is not a, you know, a job order thing, like hire them, you know, give them work one day and decide, oh, I don't have anything to, to get to, you know, to, uh, for you to work on today, just come back on Friday. You know, it can't happen like that because these are people with families that they're supporting. Okay. Um, when we hire these VAs, because we don't, you know, see when you sign up for us, we actually hire a VA, you know, for you. Okay. And we train these VAs, we invest, we train them. And after training, they're going to be handed off to you. They're going to be ready to work for you. Now we need some level of commitment because these VAs are going to be committed to you as well. So if you say, you know, you have to be ready, you need to have the finances, right? Because this is investment you need before hiring a VA, you, should, you have to be sure that you are able to invest for at least three months to try it out. You know, I think one month is too short. But we don't really have any obligation here, no contract, no obligation, but you know, um, hoping that you you keep the VA for at least a minimum of three months just to see to, to give the VA enough enough time to actually prove himself. You know, because there's always learning curve, right? And um, commit at least three months, right? And you know, um actually also give time because we're going to be giving them to you already they're going to be already trained but of course there are certain company specific things that only you will know okay so you have to sit down with your va actually have facetime with them you know have video you need to you know a lot for video meetings like this you know you need to talk to them it's actually better than just a phone call right every week there should be at least one video call to you know make sure that you and your va are still aligned you know, um, for you to sit down and discuss your KPI, discuss what has been worked for the week, you know, and plan for the following week. 
you know, okay, where are we falling short? Where are we strong? What, what, where do we need to double down on? Um, so those are the kind of things that you need to work with um, that you need to do for your VA. So, you know, treat them as family, know, learn about their culture, learn about, oh, especially like um, a lot of people, you know, think that these VAs can just, you know, follow, you know, American um, holidays and labor laws. We also have our own holidays here. So this is part of knowing their culture, right? So you have to learn, I suggest that if you want to bring value, I mean, if you want your VA to be motivated and dedicated to you and actually be happy working for you. So find out, you know, um, okay, so we have our American holidays here, but what about there? You know, we might have different holidays here. We have important holidays here that are not important in the US. So you might want to ask them, okay, uh, I think there's, you know, um, like the whole week's coming up for Americans, it's not that big a deal, but in the Philippines, it is definitely because we are a country of like 80% Christianity, Catholicism. So we actually observe Holy Week here. Maybe you could ask them, you know, if um, if they know that you're actually trying, really trying to get to know them, um, they're, they're gonna love you and they're gonna be working for you. You know, Filipinos are very hard workers. We don't really mind working overtime, sometimes even without getting paid for overtime, as long as we know that you're happy and that you're satisfied. I'm not paying, a, I'm not suggesting that you abuse your VAs, okay? I'm just saying that, you know, they're gonna be, they're, they don't complain with work. They're very hard, we're very hard workers. So if I know that you are, you give value to us or you, you actually um, appreciate us, we don't mind going the extra mile, going, you know, beyond what we are asked to do, you know. Um, so if you have a cold caller, um, don't be afraid to ask that cold caller. If you need help with social media, I'm sure that she could help you with your social media marketing, you know. Um, just a little bit of um, help here and there. Wouldn't They wouldn't mind that. Now, I, love that. Um, I love that, Karen. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and to touch on that, because I think it's important, don't hire one if you are not going to be committed you have to be committed like if this is an employee i treat it like a marriage you know what i'm saying like karen and i we talk all the time you know she's my business partner i talk all the time with my people i just had a powwow with them yesterday and uh i'm, I'm constantly understanding what's going on on a personal level with the people that i work with because that's going to be the core of which i will build an empire on top of and if you're not doing that, if you're not communicating and it's, and, and, you know, you just hire someone for like a one-off job, then go to Upwork or go to Fiverr and have someone do that one-off job. I don't like doing it that way. Main reason why is because I can't build culture on somebody who's just a contractor. They're only going to do work with me when, when I have the work for them. That doesn't make any sense. So um, th there's just so much uh, when, it, when it comes to the backend things of how these systems work. But take time to be able to say, okay, this is what I'm going to be dedicating. Dada. This is where I'm going to be. What's up, Bubby? Are you done with the call now? I'm almost done. Why? <laughs> I thought you were already done. I'll be done in like two seconds. Two? Hi, David. Hi. Bubby, go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so think about this, guys. You know, hiring an employee means more responsibility. It doesn't mean that you're delegating. It means more responsibility because you have to be able to meet in the middle to maximize what your employee is doing. Will there come a time when you can let them do their own thing? Yes, I'm all about innovation. I Like I always tell anybody that comes into my company, innovation. I love when you bring ideas to the table. I love when you're vocal, when problems are happening. This is how you build amazing businesses. So I want you guys to really take this, this call into consideration. Karen, You know, thank you so much for coming on to this call. Eric, thank you come for coming on to this call. I really appreciate you two and the work that you guys bring to the table with Virtual Squad. You're very much welcome. Yep, thank and I'm just much. super excited. I'm super excited for what we're bringing to the table with this. Guys, if you're needing virtual assistance, please reach out to myself or Karen. We'd love the opportunity to help you. If you're interested in hiring your first employee, it's just what we do. Click the link in the comments section. I'm gonna probably post this thing on YouTube. So, uh, you know, just wanted to make sure that we're able to give you guys as much value as possible. Hit us up at the uh, at virtualsquadhub.com. Let us know what's up. I'll drop the link in the description. Love you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later. All right. Goodbye. See ya. See ya. Bye, guys. Thank you. Looking forward to talking to you guys. Goodbye. Let's get it. <laughs>